This is the um, January 27th, 2020 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. We're going to have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee to discuss the fiscal 2021 budget uh, at 5 o'clock. Uh, we're being videotaped by FCAT so that um, residents and the public can see our meeting at some future point. First item on the agenda is minutes for the January 21st meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? They seem Any good. corrections or amendments? None? None? Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for January 21. So I have a second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Mm. Bill, what do you got? Uh, was the 20, Wednesday the 22nd, your favorite and mine was a Union 38 negotiating session. Proud of the report, we went many hours. Um, anything more than that, I have to, we have to go in this uh, executive session. Okay. Which is probably a good idea. Actually, it's been a while since I last reported on this. But, well, okay, don't forget, we're out of here by 5.30 because yeah. we have another meeting, so we can do that at yep. the next. Uh, yep. All right. Uh, Give me an email reminder for what you want on the agenda, if you would. All right. Oh, unless you want to just do it as part of your update. If you want an agenda item, just just uh, give me an email. Yeah, it wouldn't be an agenda item. It would just be a sort of an update because, um, uh, you know, there's just some meetings twist, attended. Some twist, some meetings twist. attended. Right, right, right. There's some twisting. Okay. Over. So, the, and then the 23rd was the Conway School Committee. There was an article in the recorder, I think it was today, about grammar school battles. And, uh, it was a little confusing for those who not only inside to read it, I thought. But. I actually haven't seen that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Phil. Um, yeah. So I had two meetings, uh, you know, so it was a short week with the meeting on Tuesday last week. So we had a, a capital improvement committee meeting and made a bunch of decisions about what we were going to recommend and and who of the committee recommended or didn't recommend it and, and uh, what we are and, going to and you're going to bring your report <coughs> on February 10th to this very board. Oh, I didn't know that we have a date, but that's good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. Gladly. I wrote you an email about that. You did. Okay. You probably didn't get it. And and, uh, uh, and we wrote something for the town report. So so. I'm sure it'll be fascinating reading, for, and it may be because it wasn't written by me. Patricia wrote it, and, and so it made it much better. Okay. Uh, and on, on Thursday, we had a, a regional planning board meeting at FERCOG. Um, the pizza was excellent, Tom. You guys missed it. And, and, uh, and mainly what we talked about was uh, recycling. Uh, the woman came who was in charge of the whole recycling program, and, and you know, it was nice to helped me understand that whole issue a lot better because we had just had Carl in to talk about his budget and things like that. So, so, and then recycling was a hot topic this weekend when a bunch of us went to the MMA conference on Saturday and recycling was a very hot topic there. So it's definitely on all of our town's mind with the, the huge change that's happening with China Mm -hmm. No longer accepting, no longer paying us for our recycling, and now we have to pay, in some cases, really more than we're paying for trash, you know, to get ripped to find a source for our recycling. <coughs> and, and yet, everybody is a diehard and wanting to continue recycling and trying to find a way to make it work. So, anyway, so yeah. that was me. Uh, I had the, the MMA meetings uh, Friday and Saturday of last week. Uh, very good conference this year. Thought they had some great workshops and um, good meetings. Uh, the uh, Selectments Association meeting was good. Did you did you get to that one? Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I thought it was it was very good. Very good session. Uh, very good sessions over the, those two days. Um, okay, next item on the agenda, public comment. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, okay. I, I, I think we might have just a, a brief message. Yes, hi. Hi. 
My name is Hope Crolius, and I attended some of the Citizen Academy sessions, which I thought were excellent. And finally, my New Year's resolution was to somehow get involved, start taking Phil up on his suggestion to at least attend Selectman's meetings, and sort of so um, finally got here. And, um, and happened to swing by uh, Town Hall this morning and talk to Tom, and um, I had filled out the form about which committees <coughs> may need to be, get involved in. Can and we all make our pitch to you? <laughs> you all make your pitch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wish I had the expertise, the skill level. I had to check limited on most of them. I have very few skills. But um, the Ag Commission Committee was something that was on there, as, long as, as well as the Board of Registrars, even if just sitting and being a poll sitter. <laughs> but uh, mostly I was interested in getting involved in the Agricultural Committee. I was possibly signaling my interest. Um, I was on the... I lived in Amherst for 31 years and was on uh, the Public Shade Tree Committee down there, which is an agriculture, but um, I figured it was the Conway, the Ag Commission is the Conway equivalent of the Shade Tree Committee. Close and, question. Yeah. So I don't know very much about it. Tom forwarded me some past minutes and uh, that I, I plan to read over this evening and just wanted to signal a possible interest pending reading up on what what activities have taken place in the past. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's great. Thanks. For protecting trees, I can make a pitch to the Conservation Commission that protects river streams and trees a bit, you know, does, is, is looking for a member. And so. You can do both. <laughs> the, the Act Commission doesn't have nearly as much on its plate. No, that's right. So you could have one active and then one not so active, and that would round out your <coughs> town yeah. volunteer schedule. And on the Conservation Commission, we have an excellent chair who knows everything real well. Is that Peter? And then a, no, Bruton Strange. And then, it, and then a number of new members, and you would be learning then right along with them. So you would not feel like the only person that doesn't know what they're doing. Ah. I have a little experience. I'm a, a garden designer, and I uh, once, several years ago, uh, had the pleasure of meeting the working way of presenting a design to the uh, Conservation Commission. Boy, they were very thorough, I'll tell you. They did several site visits and I had to get a, a, a surveyor. I mean, they were, they crossed every T. And, um, Frankly, it just didn't speak to me at this point. I'm we have a meeting coming up. If you want to attend one of our meetings. <laughs> He's not going to take no more of an answer. Hey, hey. I don't, um, we I just think, lost a member who was uh, somebody who was too busy, and, and so uh, I tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. So anyway, okay. Well, I can have Tom send you a note of when that <laughs> when that meeting is if you wanted to attend one. Just to should be on the, all of these should be on the uh, calendar on the town website. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's an be, offer yeah. that's hard to resist, but somehow I'm going with my gut because okay. I've been waiting for several weeks here to even get the paperwork, the form back to Tom and. Pot, you know, cogitating which 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 committee really spoke to me, and elections and agriculture seem to be it. But I'm I it's a, I I thank you for the invitation. So thank you. Well, thank you for um, wanting to volunteer. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. And I do understand that the commit commission is a committee or commission. The ag commission, commission mm -hmm. is a little more of on. Right, not more abundant, but it needs a little organizing. But you mentioned you might uh, be interested in helping it get organized. Yes, yeah. I think I have skills in 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 committee organizing. I mean, <coughs> just based on feedback from when I came to Amherst, they, the tr shade tree committee was was all but dead, um, and it had fallen into the basically the supervision of our highway superintendent, Dan Zomack, and and he had gotten older, and it just went by the wayside. We revived it. We ended up getting a $610,000 um, uh, town meeting passed a budget for a three-year plan to plant trees. And that was several years ago, and they're still spending that money because it took a long time to plant 2,000 trees. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so it's, it, was a, it was fun to bring it back from the dead, and, and they're going strong, so anyway, I'm not promising anything. I just want to humbly serve. So, 
and see what's going on. That's a great committed resuscitation specialist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you found your yeah. one we'll of the see. niches that we need. I'm sure people. I'm sure people. I'm sure it just needs. Well, anyway, I just want to attend a meeting and Please. be active if possible. Thank you. Of thank course, you. thank you. Our next item on the agenda is to consider the town office closure policy. All right, Tom, what do we got? Well, there's still two options. Um, uh, I sent it off to town council who suggested a slight change in the, the last uh, section there of option two, those two personal, uh, uh, those two sentences. If there's no formal closure of the town, it should say town offices of our own offices. Um, any employee absence requires the employee to use personal, to use vacation or personal time. Employees may make up lost time after approval by their supervisor. So, so these, the difference between these is mainly um, who makes the call um, at this point. Um, so I just, you know, bring this back for further discussion at this point now that it has been vetted. The, the middle paragraph looks slightly different too. I'm just. Yeah, that, that's that's the one. That, that's when uh, <coughs> who, who makes the call to it? Yeah. Unlike option two. Yeah, because the chair of the select board's involved. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We have opinions. Option one or option two, Phil. And and, and either can be you know amended further. Also, I mean, it, it, this is definitely a draft to be discussed. Phil, what do you think? So uh, just. In the spirit of comedy, uh, using option two as a basis with a few edits. Uh. All right. Well, for right now, let's let's adopt one or the other, and then we can massage them as we go along. No. How's, how's that? No. Then I. What's? It's just a few edits. It's not that bad. But um, I just think we should clarify, just incorporate the things that were mentioned in the comments too that, that we discussed. Um, so that uh, it reflects it in the policy. And just, just to be clear that the whole idea is that, you know, um, it's okay, obviously, if there's a state emergency. So just in the closure paragraph, um, the town will close its offices for the day by 7 a.m. when practical. Um, when there's, when, so leave, leave number one the same. And number two, when localized severe weather prevents safe travel on Route 116. Only on Route 116? Right, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's, it's town offices on, on the state highway, and um, it's getting from, the, you know, if, if, if it's not safe. Well, well, if, it, if we limit it to 116, then we're, we're not saying anything about those people that come from a distance. Like, we have one from Orange, one from Western. Right, that's one six. That's why it's so important to have it safe travel on Route One Sixteen. Well, what about safe travel between where they live and One Sixteen? For my house, it's hard to get from my house to down to Route One Sixteen. Right. Right. Um, you know, it's it's a completely different thing. It's just a, to to me, it's just important that it just because the schools closed, they have a much higher standard, and it's it's the furthest dirt road out. And it's children in wheelchairs and things like that. And, and it's just important that this doesn't end up being that every time the schools close, the town closes. And so the. Um, I definitely took that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, you know, and, and, and you know, it's kind of, it's, I, I thought that it should be, you know, maybe put in a, a sentence about that it's expected that. Um, that everybody that lives in Conway, Massachusetts has snow tires and is, can safely travel the roads in general. Um, We're not going to put snow tires no. on the policy. Um, yeah. Town employees are required to have snow tires? No, I don't think we're going to do that. And, uh, As a general draft, Phil, which one do you like? A draft to be, um, again, massage more. An, an initial policy to be revisited. How's that? Um, nothing gets revisited unless I remember that it gets revisited. I don't remember all that much stuff. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, you know, this meeting's over at 5.30. Yeah, yeah. So two is less onerous than one, but, um, you know, the localized severe weather, you know, po policies exist like long after the people involved in them um, are aware of what their initial interpretations and desires were. So it's important that the policy express that because 20 years from now, um, when we don't have and you know whatever it, the people live with this policy and so if it if it's vague like where it says just where localized severe weather is forecast and then that just gives that amount of discretion um that's too much too much ambiguity for my comfort I, I'm, I'm not worried about 20 years from now well we should because be. the board well, 20 years from now can make another policy if they want okay so yes yeah, so, so so what this does is it is it is it names the people who are in charge of interpreting what that means. So that's the that that's those are the judges of what that means. It's the highway superintendent, the town administrator, and the chair of the select board. So so it, it doesn't it doesn't nail it down further than something that's that's really local, but it does name who and very and severe, but it does name who is responsible for interpreting that, which is one of the things that I'm trying to nail down. And I don't particularly care who it is, I just would like to nail it down. Um, I, like, I like the pay third part of the first one, of option one. <coughs> you know, like say, saying that people will be paid for the day, you know, if the town closes, closes the offices. Yeah, no, bad idea. Regular, I don't know, regular, you know, it's not. So the second one just says only if people come to work and then they have to leave because things are getting really bad, um, then, they, then they get paid for and the rest of the day. So that's the difference in, in those two regarding pay. And, I, and Phil, I did try to take your, you know, your comments into account in that. I should, I should acknowledge I do know that, and I, I, I do appreciate that. <coughs> so, um, and it's not like this happens every day. But option two is more consistent with our negotiating position uh, than option one. In the school. For sure. Like, but but much so we, we have to separate those two things, Phil. You have to separate no. select board from school. My, from my attempt to ar make that argument on Wednesday night did not go well. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, so, yes, yes. But, but that... Yeah. So, like, like no, really, didn't, me. like really not well. <laughs> so let me know when I get summer. So, so, okay. so, so the the second thing, the, the highway depart, uh, superintendent should not be vested with the authority to make the decision. It should be the town administrator and the chair of select board in consultation with the highway superintendent. Well, it, it, it's because he, he doesn't he, he's not familiar with the whole policy. We, we he's not. Need, we need his input, though. Phil. Correct. That's what I just said. Yeah. So the town administrator and the chair should have the authority in consultation with the the, the highway superintendent. But so that'll do it. If, if all right. So you so want it? That's good. Yeah. Two in consultation with the, the highway superintendent, oh, as as opposed okay. to him having can the authority. Can we make yep. that change, yep. and we'll we'll pass that policy, or we'll mm -hmm. vote on that policy. Sure. Sure. Phil? sure. All right. Well, as amended by Phil, we have <laughs> <the> second <laughs> paragraph <laughs> on option two. I'll move that we accept the uh, town office's <laughs> closure policy. Do I have a second, Phil? Sure. All right. All in favor. Aye. Boy, I'm glad we got through that. Okay, the next item is to appoint Bob Armstrong as Capital Improvement Planning Committee representative to the Town Hall and Office Renovation Committee. Does anybody know Bob Armstrong? Yeah, so this is one of the things that came oh. out in our last meeting when we had our, our, our capital meeting. I couldn't talk to anybody else into doing it, so. Right. so I'm happy to do it. That's good. Yeah. Okay, I'll make that motion. Phil, do you have a second on that? I will second that motion. Okay. Uh, I'm honored. All in favor? Can I vote aye? Why not? Aye. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yes. I abstain, so. Unanimous. It was unanimous. <clears throat> okay. We have any new business? No, no new business. Okay, we don't have the. Uh, the finance committee here yet. So, Tom, do you have anything unanticipated 48 hours in advance? Uh, nothing under that. No. Okay, town administrator update. Yes, I have that. You got two of them there? Yeah, we're not going to get one myself. Uh, 
on committee news. Oh, here it is. I received a visit from Hope Croyus, and she showed up tonight. So we've already she done is. that. In, in the flesh. In the ours. Oh, cool. In department on paying attention to the to the select board, which it's, it's uh, very refreshing to have people uh, here. Uh, in departmental news, I attended the Mass Municipal Association annual meeting along with John and Bob and also got updates on municipal and human resources law as well as human resources best practices and pressed some vendors for information on behalf of the treasurer. This has to do with uh, the item that she discussed under her budget last time, with the potential of uh, switching payroll software vendors. Mm -hmm. I, I met with both of them. Uh, I also attended the Mass Municipal Management Association annual meeting where I was re-elected as District 1 representative for managers and administrators. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's great. Right. Thank you. Uh, we have received updated recycling contracts. I am confirming that they are the updated versions. I found three of them on my desk and have tentatively put them on the agenda for next week. I'm having a standard contract draft reviewed by town council for use with the town hall cupola project. We have a standard goods and services contract template, but not one for construction. We don't need to bid the project as such, but we do need to post it on two state websites as well as our own, and typically such postings include contract language as well as prevailing wages along with the scope of work so everyone knows exactly what they're bidding on. Except it's not a bid, they're just providing quotes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's the way you bid small projects? Is that what this, is for, this is for under $50,000. Yeah. They still have to have a, uh, they have to have a 50% payment bond um, instead of 100% and uh, other, other requirements are, are loosened. Uh, I have heard from the town of Hatfield that their 350th Incorporation Day celebration is going to be May 31st, and I understand they have reached out or will be reaching out to each select board member to issue an invitation. I received their invitation today. Did anybody else receive an invitation? It could be in my mail. Yeah. I would, I would imagine it's, it's in everybody's mail today. So we're going to march in it maybe, like, <clears throat> like for Sunderland? Is that it? If they have, you know, um, the same kind of... Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, I thought those Sunderland well, we, rules, we can, Conway rules, we shirts went yeah, over yeah, well. Yeah, we can, we, can, we, can, we can hold out. For Cross out Sunderland, Sunderland, you know. Um, also, um, we got the word that uh, Maya, uh, not Maya, but our, our insurance trust is not rate increasing their um, insurance rate. For Health insurance? insurance? You heard that, Phil? So, um, that was a rumor, but there was also a rumor that it was going to just going to be very low. Well, the, so the word was no increase. That's that's what I understand. That was the vote at the meeting Jan came back from, and that should that that vote should um, be the formal uh, establishment of that. That would be good. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, that will be good. Concerns of the selectmen. Phil, do you have any concerns? Um, uh, none that I can talk about absent in an executive session. Okay. Mail. Okay, we got a letter from the, um, the Department of Public Utilities in answer to our letter um, requesting that they speed up approval of our municipal aggregation petition. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen this, but it's... It just came today. Mm. Read it, read it up. It's short. Oh, well, good, that makes it okay. more amenable to public it, It's addressed to um, the three of us, uh, and it says, on January 21st, 2020, Ooh. the Department of Public Utilities Department received your letter concerning the status of the town of Conway's town, proposed uh, municipal aggregation program. Uh, this is the first letter the foreman has received from the town regarding this matter. As you are aware, the municipal aggregation petition from the town of Conway is filed together with the municipal aggregation petition for 14 other communities. Although we cannot provide you with a timeline when our investigation will complete, 
the department is currently finalizing its review of these 14 dockets. Signed, Jessica Ellis, and she is the hearing officer. Well, so, it was could, a, could you make sure a copy of that goes to Colonial? Uh, or oh, I they, could, they, or they, they, uh, they sent it to Colonial? I, they, I, yeah, they're copying it. Sure. Look, they got, this, they got the address right. They knew what state we lived in. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged. We're about six months late from the original schedule. Yes, so. yes. We also got a, um, a letter from the Upper, Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District uh, concerning... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that, that, that's, uh, that's from a while ago. Um, that's actually not mail that you need to uh, deal okay. with. At this point, we, uh, we ordered some more flags yeah. for the graves. That's the upshot of that. Okay, any announcements? No, okay. Uh, where is our finance committee? Hopefully they're making noise right now. They'll recruit you to join the finance committee. If you yeah, there. if you stay in that seat, you'll become part of the finance committee. <laughs> Oh, thank you, everybody. This so is thank great. You. Oh, if you could leave that for the finance oh. committee. Thank you. If you need oh, a copy, we can get it. I should have sat there then. Sorry. Nah, don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay. No problem. All right. Stick Thanks. around. This is, this, is the, this is the technical school. I have to go make dinner. <laughs> oh, all right. In the library. Bye. Oh. Have fun. Bye. Thank Thanks. You Thanks. Thanks. Alan, we're ready when you are. Come on, Alan. So this is the only budget for tonight for Franklin Technical? Short meeting. I guess we so. have to be out of here by five. Baseball game too? Uh, no, no, no baseball game. But we have another we have another meeting to go to. Why? Wow. We just have another meeting. Well, uh, nicely dressed. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> you you uh, you could come. Are you are you expecting anybody else? I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay, just the two of you. I think okay. so. Where's your next meeting? Sunderland. What do you got to do? Talk about budget. That sounds exciting. Oh, that's a so, good thing. you know, it, that's a good thing. Yeah. Wow. Yes, it's always fun. Absolutely. Talking about budgets. It's a better thing to do in the middle of winter on a Monday night. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. Okay. You ready? Pull up our Franklin County Technical Suite. Come on up, all righty. The hot seat. I got a superintendent runs late, but I hear you got to get to a meeting so I can at least cover the financial stuff. Absolutely. He's the student stuff anyway. That's what you right. may or may not be interested in. Yeah. I just care about the financial stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's the nature of the beast. So here's. This info is hasn't even been seen yet by our school committee. Well, some of the information, because the governor's numbers weren't out the last time. So we got five over here. Three, four, five. Ooh, I like your staple there. Staple is staple. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Works for about two, three, four pages, and then yeah, it yeah. goes away pretty quickly. <laughs> so my name is Russ Cobras. I'm the business manager at Franklin County Tech. I know Tom's been there for a while. Um, Rick Martin, who's our superintendent, like I said, he's on his way. If he doesn't make it, we'll at least get the financial info out to you. So we scrambled, as you all probably do, once the governor's budget comes out to put together something for our school committee to see so next the second wednesday of february will be our public hearing on the budget that'll be the official first time school committee gets to see it we've shared a lot of information with our finance subcommittee of school committee and then the second wednesday of march is when our school committee votes on the budget so if you see something you don't like you can bug either myself directly or your rep um, to the franklin county tech school in Damascus, 
we'll call the superintendent, we'll be glad to help you out. I handed out three, three pages of stuff. And if I were one of you, I probably would have flipped the page two and tried to figure out what our town assessment was. And page three actually gives you a little bit more perspective because it's a trend. So you'll see that your assessment went down because your enrollment went down. You went from six down to five, five students. I so thought last year you mentioned our, our enrollment was probably going to go. We up. were guessing seven. So the superintendent and I had um, talked this afternoon and his best guess was seven last year. Um, so we had actually five that made it to the October 1 count. I don't know how many started the year out, but they've got to make it uh, through the school at least till October 1 to get counted on um, our budget and the state's um, foundation enrollment. And that does include transportation? In yes. In your budget? Yep. That's great. Yep. What's your total E&D last year? Total E&D for, wasn't too much higher than the 220 we used last year, it was probably two, oh, for the FY19. FY18, we were tight on E&D. FY19, my E&D came in rate uh, full up to the cap, 5%. So the, the appropriation, that's what you plan to spend out of the E&D in advance? So for the operating budget, 220, we would like what, what we may propose, and again, this is way ahead of my school committee, so I'm almost uncomfortable talking about it. But what we need to propose is we started this past year a veterinary science program in a school that has no room for another vocational program. So we own land, if you come down Industrial Boulevard and turn as falls, we own land across the street. So we want to set up a, like a Butler Steel building that will become a veterinary uh, science building. It's almost like a mock-up of a veterinary um, clinic, but we'll have students and learning in it. So the any e and extra E&D we have, we're going to propose as administration to the school committee that we plow that into building that building so there's no capital assessment that would happen beyond that. Did you ever consider buying that Hallmark building? We did. We actually went down, we looked at it, we talked to the folks, and we have a... We have some bridge years. We have a Siemens energy loan or long-term energy lease, 15 year lease that will be wrapping up in 2023. That will free up operating money. And when we were talking to Hallmark, we were hoping their time frame would be a little different, but obviously that building sat empty for a while. So they were actively out there marketing the building. And we felt we just couldn't commit to that. You know, if it were closer to 2023, I think we would have had more serious talks with them about it. So, how do you how do you calculate your assessment per per pupil? That is on page two. Is that just the 94 divided by five? So that is. So I got to calculate your assessment. So I go from the state's minimum contribution and an orange column. I do the transportation, whatever we're charging you above net school spending, so above what's required. Um, we give you a credit back for the e and we're going to use for the budget, and then we hit local assessment. That is then divided by your um, pupils to so come up with the assessment for pupil. Now, obviously, the state formula drives the, you're one of our rich towns, so the richer the town you are, the higher your we assessment is. We have the highest be. assessment. Correct. So yeah. you, Leiden, and I believe there is the town of Sunderland. Sunderland. They have the highest. The well, Deerfield's right up there. Yeah, so you all are our rich folk. And Orange Sunderland. has a, a low <laughs> And Orange has a very low assessment. Correct. And that's because they're a very poor town? Correct. So this, right, right, the state formula is driven by two major factors, which is EQV. So how, how wealthy are your property owners and also on the wage factor, how wealthy are your residents? They blend the two. 
put it into this mixer, it comes up and says, okay, you're Richard Towns, you owe more to, your, to uh, contribute to your schools, which means you get less aid. So for, for, uh, from us, we get less state aid from you guys, but you're kicking in more from the town. And for Orange, the town kicks in less, we get more state aid from them. Mm -hmm. So if you combine the two, all of you are paying the same amount to us in the end when you combine the state aid that the state gives us and uh, the local assessments. That actually was one of the more accurate summarizations of the entire funding. I had 22 years to practice. <laughs> <laughs> to practice. No, 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 remember was, the formula? Very, no, no, I, I studied, I, I, like, I'm, I'm but, on this stuff. Like, that, that was in one sentence, one, that was a run-on sentence. There were <laughs> too, many, too many commas, but, uh, but in one sentence, that did pretty much do it. <laughs> I'm from Maine, I gotta keep it simple. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, um, so just, just, if you could just address a couple of the items that just seem to have gone up beyond like the 3% sort of. Sure. So with the instructional services seem to have gone up a bit more than that. Just, yep, so our cost of living adjustment per a negotiated contract with teachers is 2% for this year. So the rest of that big leap is, like I said, we added the veterinary science program, so we're still ramping up a person in there. A couple people. A couple people, thank you. And then actually Rick Martin, the superintendent, has joined us. And we're looking, uh, we're adding from going from two to three instructors in electrical, and we're adding a, a little bit more time to our third culinary instructor who wasn't full time. So that's got some add. We are actually in a growth mode. I could show what that growth mode looks like. I apologize for being late. Um, our growth mode is for, well for Conway, it hasn't hit Conway yet. So that's a good thing if you're in the town of Conway because what I have here is, as you can see where the trends are for Conway. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, October 1, we only had five students in the entire school, grades nine through 12. What I like to look at, that number six for next year, is just a projection. We have two seniors from Conway this year that are expected to graduate. Right now, we have um, two applicants from Conway. So if the two seniors graduate, that gets our total number down to, five, uh, down to three, and if the two more from Conway come in, that gets it to five, maybe another applicant or two applies, so that number six is a projection for next year. Mm -hmm. You were as high as nine back in 2017, mm -hmm. um, and based on where we're trending, I would expect that to reach that number within a year or two again. Just so that you guys can plan accordingly. Because we started the new Vet Tech Center, it's a new clinic. We are building a standalone clinic as well. The interest from our 19 member towns has been through the roof. There's some pros and cons of that. You may have had students, and I know you have had students from Conway that have gone to Smith Boat <coughs> at a cost of $40,000. Well, because we're starting this program, I think that will really help uh, curb some of those types of interests because we have a vibrant program beginning to take off for us. As far as um, what else we're beginning is a medical assistant program and, and an LPM program. So we're really beginning to expand our offerings um, and that's how I can probably project that our numbers will go up a little bit. And when we look at where we are total school-wise, we are now at 481, we're the second bar from the right there. We were 463 last year, 481 this year. We're projecting 505 for next year total. Um, and that is because we're gonna graduate about 112 students, we're gonna bring in about 160 or 150. So, um, and based on the current applicant pools that we have now and the trends, that we will be, um, able to reach that and that's not a goal of ours it's just because of the interest we're just taking the kids that are qualified and they have an interest one of the important components is our per pupil cost as we can see our overall per pupil cost this year is 13,097 you just got through seeing how yours is 18,800 yeah, yeah. change yeah. right um, last year, our overall per pupil cost was 13320 and last year, yours was 18700 and change. So yours only dipped up a little bit um, 
because of your relative wealth. I say relative wealth because I understand that no one um, in these towns are wealthy as comparable speaking, but this Department of Education believes you're just as wealthy as well, Wayland, Weston, and Wellesley. And because uh, they have the same per people cost, that's crazy that may sound. Um, we also have the capital assessment. We're as rich as Wellesley. How about that? How much the Wellesley? They're putting a college campus out here. No, it's a, you, you know as well as anyone that, 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 that those numbers are deceiving and that it's just a few, a few wealthy, very wealthy households can really skew them up in a small town like this. Yep. And you know, yeah, we, we in fact have one in five households that have food insecurity, yeah. according to the state data. So, so it really um, is not a fair so formula. A lower, a lower <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fair assessment when you start to take a look at the way they assess some of the towns in the eastern part of the state inside of Route 128. It's just it's so is, is our assessment? I mean, your average assessments are what's lower because of the other towns that are pulling it down. And Bingo. In, in Wellesley, they don't have other towns that pull their equivalent of that. Um, Wellesley's a town by itself, so ah, they're okay. not. They're their own district, they're their own towns, and if they're going to compare themselves to the Joneses, they're relatively yeah. consistent. They got Needham and Newton and Whalen and Weston yeah. and Dover and Sherman. Pretty, they're right there. Yeah. yeah. I grew up around there, so I know the towns extremely well. Yeah. Um, so. But it's, it's, out here, it takes. Bill Cosby's in Sheldon. Yeah. <laughs> he's with Logan Morris. He's not now. Those <laughs> <not now. laughs> folks wish in there. Uh, <laughs> on paper, everyone in town has more money than they do. Right. 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 In Wellesley, there's more of those people. Yes, sir. Than right. the one or the three yeah. or the five yeah, in the nice town here and there. Yeah. And around That'd be the good point. I have a quote. Well, Leverett and Shrewsbury are. They, what are they? Where are the students from that? Where are they? Smith Boat? Because I not to see them on. They don't belong to any. Um, district. Oh, so they, the Amherst regional type schools actually did not join a vocational district. So they got a choice of going three spots actually. Pathfinders, not too far from them, us, and then Smithville. Yeah, and how do you charge them? Well, it's, it's, it's more than we charge you guys. <laughs> so it's kind of the That's same situation as you guys are in with Smith. Yeah. They're yeah. in with yeah. that, whatever school that they have to go to. So. Yeah. Um, you start to find some school boards or some town boards start to approach us over the years and want to kind of become a member because they yeah. can see the writing on the wall. Um, as far as the capital assessments, as you can remember, um, about four years back we um, went out to vote to have new windows and doors, roof, paving, and all the stuff that we haven't touched our facility in 40 years. And the capital assessment for you guys last year was 7,887. This year is going to be 6,698. And that's going to fluctuate up and down, but it's going to slowly go down as you get to the end of um, that cycle. But it will it can cycle back up, cycle back down. That is not something that we're able to do. That's something based on the equalized valuation of the towns. Is the work done? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The work is done and um, we have recouped uh, uh, significant energy savings as a result. As far as um, uh, the other part of that is uh, our special education population, just because that's an added cost. Um, we've taken about 38% total special education in grades 9 and 10. And that's significant when you compare it to your local regional school districts like Frontiers at 19%, Maha 16%. You know, uh, Pioneers 13%, Greenfields 15%. So we're taking in a high proportion of yeah. students and we're able to maintain a level two status, which is, I think, very good on the part of our staff to be able to maintain our academics and be able to provide them high quality. We have the most advanced placement uh, students involved in our English language arts and our uh, computer science and in our math. And so we're very excited about that I'm offering as well. And um, uh, some of the other touch points would be, uh, click right here, see, um, did I hit them? You know, well, you guys probably know that we build a new home um, about every other year. We, uh, our construction trades get together and we have a partnership with the, uh, a foundation run through the Greenfield Savings Bank where 
We are able to uh, build a new home for someone in the community every single, every other year or so, and that helps kids with real life experience. We revamped our welding shop, as you might have heard, with a $500,000 grant that we wrote from a competitive situation that really gave the kids state-of-the-art mechanical skills. As you heard earlier, we revamped our electrical shop, and we're going to be revamping our health technology shop to include that medical assistant in LPM. And we are excited to build a new vet clinics to really help put a staple on what is needed in the community. I, I think Pacific School provides extremely important services to our, our uh, students. Yeah, and just uh, certainly it's, it's great that you're um, expanding your programs, and the programs you're expanding yep. to are sound, sound yep. terrific. Mm -hmm. And it's great that you're increasing your enrollment every year. Yep. You know. Just a, a couple of closing notes as it pertains to Frontier, just some observations. The, your, the Chapter 78, um, is it, you, you're 400 and 85, I think Frontier's six, 650. Um, so uh, it's students. So, and your your your, your chapter seventy went up from thirty three million nine hundred and twenty five to four million three hundred and ninety, which is a reasonable increase that you should get every year. Right. Um, right. Frontiers went up twenty thousand. Yeah. Mm. Um, your 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 state. A transportation reimbursement um, again, which is not nearly enough, but it went up from 566 to 606. Mm -hmm. Frontiers went down two thousand dollars. Yeah, and that and, money has gone up and down and it yep. cycles through um, the regional transportation, as you're well aware, um, or you may not be aware, that Franklin County Tech as a regional school district covers 561 square miles of territory. Um, that's by far the largest regional school district in the state. The second largest is the Mohawk School District in 261. Mm -hmm. Everything else drops in the hundreds after mm -hmm. that. So we are more than twice as large as the second largest regional school district in the state geographically. Mm -hmm. What does that do to our bus routes? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. That's an amazing cost. So the state's kind of handicapped to make sure that, you know, they can't limit us too too much um, into that area so I think what they try to do is make sure that that aid is um, at least justified and a footnote on the chapter 70 frontier is in hold harmless and still is in hold harmless so 10 years ago they had 654 students the FY 20 count I don't know what 21 is but it was 577 so that that student drop really put the brakes on chapter 70 for all of us. So even us at one point we dropped below, yeah. um, we, we were into the whole harmless clause and now that we're starting to build up our programs and students. So we, we have an advantage that we're recruiting from a bigger catchment area than the yeah. frontier is. Sure. So yeah. that plays into the chapter sure. 70. Yeah. Any, any questions for finance? Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, just out of curiosity, uh, are you turning applicants away? We haven't been in a situation in the last 11 years I've been here to develop what they, the Department of Ed would call a viable list that uh, students would have to be on the wait list. We haven't had that opportunity because qualified applicants have always come to Franklin County Tech. We may be, depending on the number of applicants um, we receive this year, be in that situation for the first time for a handful of students, but we have to wait and see because we don't know who's qualified until they go through the five criteria, they have their interview, they submit all their applications, and then uh, we take all qualified applicants. Because uh, some kids, and it's important, why is there an, an interview process for a public vocational technical school? Because we have equipment in that in many of our shops that if you don't display the pre-vocational skills to follow directions and keep safe, you're going to not only endanger yourself, but you're going to endanger somebody else. Fingers can be chopped off. Um, you know, hands. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that if you're not qualified to be there, then you're only going to be hurting somebody else if you are let in. So it's very important that you have a strict application process to keep the safety of all the kids that are there in the school. Um, having said that, 
uh, we could be in that situation and I would say definitely by next year we would be in that situation where we might have our first kids on the waiting list. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. So what is your, what, how, what's the number of students you're going to take in next year for the vet tech program and then also for the medical scanning? Well right now we have 17 students enrolled in our freshmen we're only going to add one grade level per year. Uh -huh. So next year we get freshman and sophomore, year after that freshman, sophomore, junior, year after that freshman, sophomore, junior, senior until the program is full. So we can grow the program appropriately, develop the curriculum appropriately so we make sure we're not going too fast. Okay. So we will want to go slow to move fast uh -huh. and the way to be able to do that is slowly grow the program over a number of years. So I'm expecting next year we'll grow it by three more additionally. Okay. So we got 17 this year, we could probably take in 20 next year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So going back onto the, the transportation, last year I remember you said that uh, we were lucky to have group co as a bus company. And you were talking about the contracts and how the states kind of, can, can you speak to any of that like a year later? So yeah, when we go out to bid, so we accepted a bid from uh, Kismeskis Bus Company and we did a group of us schools, so not Frontier didn't participate obviously because you got a very good vendor, and that vendor is not interested in bringing in. No, no I don't know if there's some unspoken rule between local vendors, but whatever the case may be. Uh, and then I think Mahar on the other side <laughs> has a local vendor over there, so the rest of us joined in the bid. So I. Our bid prices came in probably, I think Rick and I in the in last year's budget were anticipating a seismic shock. So I think we had like a 20% increase and it maybe came in at 10 or 15%. So that's why transportation is level funded for the 2021 budget because we had plenty mm -hmm. in it before we opened the bids. Um, so yes, your, your transportation contractor, hold on. <laughs> because that, that's, that's a, what we have for Frontier. That's a though. great, right. yeah, yeah, for Frontier. It's a great price. Not, not, and, not the thing. Yeah. So, so in, in, the, in the past, besides Gripco, we were able to participate in that bidding because we were able to opt out. Correct. This current, the, you know, you get your the, homework, the current yep. round, they, they <laughs> withdrew that from us. Right. And, and, yeah. and we feel that that impacted our contract with Gripco. With Gripco. And we, we, yeah, we went from a little bit of uncertainty yeah, to to yeah. no uncertainty whatsoever, yeah. uh, and um, we I, I don't know the mechanism. I don't know who was all. I know I know that was a FERCOG deal. Um, um, Which they yeah. helped out, but it was the business yeah. managers and the superintendents who made the decision. So as a bigger group, the the opt out was was killing us as a bigger group because then companies come in and cherry pick. Mm -hmm. So we were afraid of that. So we did the opt out two or three two times, I think. So this was the first time we tried it without the opt-out. <coughs> yeah. So and it, yeah, I did, I have to get information from your business manager. What you know when when your contract ended and you start a new contract. We just started a new one in the fall. It's a five year. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it, it, it's a it was a seismic shift for us. I talked to the companies who also bid on the central and eastern part of the state, and and it's hard for us to get competition. I thought eastern part of the state would have plenty of competition. Because over there, real estate's a big thing. So if a new company, bus company comes in, they want a bus garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And imagine trying to be in the inside the 495 belt and finding a chunk of land. So yeah, yeah. Co finding competition is really tough. And that's so even though Gripco might have, I, I guarantee you're not up to. Oh, I know. What, I, I know. <laughs> what we're we're paying close. So. We're we're close. close. <laughs> but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Your sweetheart's a little bit less sweet after your yeah. ball. That's all. Just out of curiosity, Charlie Mon, uh, Roe Monroe, and Holly, they go over to Jury, Jury, or they can? So they, they are another set of towns that don't belong to. So yeah. for whatever reason, when Franklin County formed, there were a few handful of county towns, and you just nailed them that didn't join the district. Right. Charlie Mon, probably every five years yeah, or come more, come, come visit us to yeah. see if they want to join. Um, then they do the math and decide, well, we'll roll the dice because if oh. their enrollment drops, it's a little, yeah. they get a, a quicker benefit uh -huh. than our member towns. Well, Russ, that won't happen in the future because all those kids that want to work on farms and stuff, when we build a full-fledged agricultural school, <laughs> they'll want to join. But those, yeah, so they, they've really got 
options of tuitioning their students wherever they go. Yeah. The downside of tuitioning, and, and I have a conversation with somebody in the Hill Towns every year, is transport. They, they're the t individual towns are responsible for the transportation to get them to tech. Right. So um, we try to help them out as best we can, but they, they've got to do feeder vans and different yeah. things like that. So there, there's some headaches with them. Yeah. Are you being pressured for agriculture to, to build that up? Yeah, we've been pressuring them for <laughs> years. <laughs> well, because of this meeting yeah. several years ago, as we're not joking, yeah. um, we, um, you know, there's been some good positive. Um, Support from everybody within the county and uh, from co ops. But you have to have enough for a full class. Well, we have it. more than you enough. Do. So, um, on that end of it, we're very optimistic that we will continue our growth path because I think it's, you know, it, I don't believe it will stop just at the veterinary center. It will continue. GCC is the big expansive green stuff, you know, solar and yep. and and I wonder if you're being pressured that way too. Permaculture, that's the new word. Yeah, we are only um, usually pressured in areas which we are identifying that there are viable jobs and that are available. There are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so we look at the CMA or the um, the certified medical assistant. That's the number one uh, jobs that are available. In the healthcare industry, and so we segue to number two is the LPN. So we would, it was an easy sell for us to be able to move forward and increase our yeah. Um, yeah. shop yeah. offerings. Yeah. There. So well, one one last thing, just because you just finished a track building uh, a track yes. renewal, yes. and we're on the capital committee that's uh, yep. oh, that frontier is putting the track in. Yes. So can you just talk just very briefly about? How that went, and if, do you have a? Did, the, did it go with the vendor? Did it come in and uh, whatever? How to go with the vendor? And, I can take that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. So and do, you have, do you have any particular uh, relationship with the vendor that was so well, that was so wonderful that you wish or, to recommend? That <laughs> I, I'll be short. What it is is um, we were getting a brand new paving in, uh, as part of um, the bonding, and at that time the original plan was just to. Uh, pave the old 40 year old track and we weren't just going to use it for anything but um, by the time we went out to bid and by the time we actually received our bid amounts there was a difference of five or six months but during that time frame coincidentally petroleum prices dropped dramatically mm -hmm. that left us with a lot of excess you know and we do a petroleum with the roof we got pavements so we got all these extra things that we say you know what we would have to go back out to the town once again for bonding to do this track, which is what the plan was going to be. We could do it right now um, and be able to utilize the money from the bid process. So we were able to work with the company, and then once they were mobilized on ground, there's another bid rule under Mass General Law 4420, which articulates that you can work with um, the existing contractor for up to 25% of the total bid process if you're going to do additional projects. So they were able to negotiate, so they did, uh, they did, they re they killed off our, and redid our tennis courts, made a new basketball court, they did, you know, they ripped up all the pavement on the track and they put in brand new uh, pavement and then the whole new rubber coatings and they made an extra layer of rubber, it's like, you walk on that thing, you're like, walking on pillows. Um, it's perfect for my age, but you know, <laughs> I get to enjoy it. But So that whole process came in dramatically less than we could have ever imagined. And if um, I wouldn't want to spitball a price here, I can talk to you later, but it was um, the lowest priced track anywhere that we ever read about or heard about in, in the state. It didn't cost us that much at all. Uh, when I say under 200, it was well um, south of 200. So you never dig up the old track. You never <laughs> paid those down. No, we dug it right you up. Did. You dug, dug it, it up, up, got rid of all that stuff, mm. and we were able to still do it for a ridiculous mm. low price. Wow. Okay. All right. Do you mind if I call you about this? Because we're we're about to open oh, bids on yeah. for the engineering on Tuesday or Wednesday. I've got 40 um, pages worth of information. Uh, <laughs> no, I, think, I think it might be better for you. Are you serious? Yeah. All right. There we go. I think, I, I think it might be better. Just give me a call. All right. Uh, and then just 
you can come over and I can walk you through all of the stuff that we need. I, I've, I've got nothing but good comments about the tech school. Obviously, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, Mr. Martin, Mr. Kovas, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next meeting is scheduled for February 1st at Town Hall at 6 p.m. You give me a call. All right, I will. We're having a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30 next week. What's the next meeting? All right, if there's no more business to come before the board, so there's a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Yeah. Thank you all.